At my age, you can look back, or I can look back over the whole course of my life, and I suppose I'm just like everybody. Um, you can see that your life developed as it was meant to, in a way, I mean, and uh, right from the beginning. Um, and the, the people I encountered moving to India from London when I was 19, 17, 18, um, uh, and all these things I discovered there, whether they changed my life or it, it was my life. So I think for me, as it is for most people I've met, um, any religion, if you're Christian or Buddhist or Shaiva or Vaishnava, whatever, um, you adhere to that because you feel that this is what you belong to. And through that, you are, um, you can say you have a, some spiritual life, which we need, some people feel they need, because our everyday life um, is not enough. So, the, um, how much I've changed? I would be feel very great. I would be, when I was 17, 18, and I first encountered these people, this spirituality of India, I was in such a level that if I was at that level now, I would say that I've accomplished and I've been given a lot. So it's very hard to say from what you experience. I tried my best in my life, like many people, most people. I, I worked as hard as I could. I tried to enjoy my life also. And um, from the beginning, I can't remember from when, um, these, these things interested me, they inspired me, and um, they didn't change my life, they were uh, what my life was built around, uh, like that, I, uh, let's say. That is hard to say, it's like saying, why do you love your wife or your husband, you know? Um, uh, uh, I fell in love with India from, for, as a child, when I first heard of its existence. I fell in love with Indian music when I first heard Indian music. Um, I felt that out of, it's just a feeling, um, when I did go to India, um, and when I went back to study when I was uh, 19, 20, um, I wanted to study something that interested me a lot, and I found Tantrism very interesting because of its symbols, its deities, its very uh, beautiful and enriching philosophy, um, its immense cultural wealth, um, and its Indianness. So why I like all that, I, cause I can't say. Well, everybody has a different view of life, because we all live our lives differently. When I'm in the West, I live my life in the West, and in India, I live my life in India. The West, India, every place here with human beings is very complex, it's very rich, it has a very a great history, um, it has a, a culture that has produced great minds, it has contributed immensely to the growth of humanity, um, but it has problems, and this is true with India, as it would be true with China that I know much less. Um, I, I think that instead of feeling that in a simple way, as we used to a long time back, or some people did, that the West is very materialistic and that the East is very spiritual, uh, nowadays we've discovered that India is not so spiritual, that it also has its materialistic side. And we've also discovered that the West is not so materialistic. They also need um, uh, the benefits of spirituality, you know. So this kind of dichotomy doesn't work. And there's good and there's bad everywhere. There's ups and downs. And I think everywhere, whether you're Indian, whether you're Eastern or Western, 
every single individual needs to find inner peace and everybody needs to be able to live with each other peacefully and that problem is universal and whether you're western means you wear some clothes you're in you're not you wear different clothes you have a different history different life. you are the same people are born they die they get married some are happy some are sad but the problem always for everybody is to be happy and to be peaceful and to live with one another in in peace so that's not to do with the west or the east well you see that is a very interesting question because you could say that about jesus or the buddha um or any great mind um i don't think that abhinav gupta would be a university professor which he would be would have be extraordinary he'd make history then as he did now as he did then yeah um if he were born in india um he would be a spiritual man he would be a guru and uh, as he was previously um what would be do, would he doing in the modern world well uh, what someone like swami lakshman ji um who was like the modern abhinav gupta in our own context and on conditioned referencing and um uh, the greatness the learning the great knowledge uh, in the man i would like to think that he would be a, a nice kind humble modest man who made everybody feel comfortable who didn't make people feel that he is great and i'm small the other person is small that if he he would be in in himself as a person he would be um, as great a person as the works he has produced so the effect that the influence he would have upon others around him whether it's now or it is a thousand years ago would would be the same you would hope to find a man of tremendous erudition who is humble and that would be of great benefit to the world No, I would absolutely not. My wife is uh, Italian. She didn't want to live in India. We quarreled for 7 years about that. She came to live in Italy. My children felt my absence and it made them suffer, I'm afraid. And I'm much of course very sorry about that. But I did what I had to do. And everybody in my family agrees and uh, it involves sacrifices. Whatever you do involves some sacrifice and involves bearing a Uh, different difficulties and uh, I I I I don't regret it at all anything Oh yes I mean you have to if uh, every um, oriental religion great religion uh, Buddhism and uh, Hinduism um they all uh, they're all based on the belief in reincarnation and that's that you see we have to think that if you're in a culture very often and it's quite natural you think the whole world's like that if you go to india everybody thinks this is like india everywhere else and if you're in america it's, it's all in the west it's all like the west so it seems very strange and unusual a very sort of crazy idea to believe in rebirth in the west but for one thing but it's not at all every all the chinese do the all, all everybody in southeast asia all the way to japan india and they believe in rebirth so what is the idea in in the christian in the semitic view ah uh, then god is a judge and we are saved from our sins by repentance or whatever according to god's judgment no now in in india in the whole of the east the judge there is god who judges but he's the dispenser of the fruits of our actions so that's something similar but they also may have a god in kashmiri shaivism who says well your karma is not so good but we can make up for it huh so you are free from having to keep coming because the idea is that the suffering is not that you go to hell but the suffering is that you come back into this world 
so that everybody believes that. So Kashmiri Shaivism also. Postural yoga um, did not exist to any significant degree um, before the 12th, 13th century and only really developed beyond the 14th century. Um, to sit, to meditate in a comfortable position goes right back to the Buddha or pre-Buddhism, okay? So there is no um, traditional connection with the two. But people like John Friend in Anusara Yoga and other people, I don't know, I'm not um, uh, learned in that, um, they combined, um, and Muktananda also, uh, or Guru Mai, um, uh, added that you could combine uh, postural yoga with um, uh, teaching uh, Kashmiri Shaivism, or, so they would have a subject like Shakti or um, Light of Consciousness and a small talk, a few minutes, not long time. And then when uh, they are doing the asana, uh, then um, those truths uh, would be spoken and this would enhance their state of mind in the course of practicing the asanas. I'm not, I can't tell you because I'm not, uh, I, I, I should have practiced more asana because it's a, a physical problem is if you don't, okay? My friends who are teachers of asana yoga um, and my small experience of it is it, it brings a peaceful state of mind. It generates a kind of clarity and centeredness. It gives us a structure to our lives, regular practice. Um, it helps you very much to feel that your body is healthy and strong, which asana uh, does. Um, and so if you dedicate your mind and your attention to higher spiritual matters, then certainly if you're healthy and have the kind, that kind of stability, it's a very, very good and very healthy to do that. I just want to say that in the end, I, I feel that um, the, the essence of our spiritual life is to be able to become uh, nice, egoless, humble, gentle, kind people, or maybe sometimes kindness is not appropriate, but to be considerate, loving of one another, and to live in peace with each other, um, to think that, have a kind of attitude that the whole world is my family. So I will just add that that Kashmiri Shaivism uh, hopefully leads to that and I think all religions in the end I think well lived, properly practiced I would hope would lead to that although sometimes it happens that they fight with each other but I don't believe I, I believe that there is a fundamental unity of religions and which would prevent someone like me thinking, fighting with somebody else because they have different beliefs so in this way, I hope and I pray for oneness, for peace in the world, that everybody should be happy and content in what they're doing, that should, they should be well established in their own spiritual belief, that, um, and like that, that they, I can't say about others, and that, uh, yes, we wish good things for everybody. <laughs>